In this video, I want to look at risk analysis and security policy. First off, let's look at what is risk. Risk are just chances that we're going to take. There's things that we just can't we can't help and that we'll have to figure out how to deal with. So here's some ideas that we can look at within risk of what we can do. We can try to avoid risk, and this is exactly what it sounds like. We can accept the risk. There's just things we're going to have to ha accept with it. We're going to reduce the risk, what we can do to minimize it, and we can transfer the risk. Now, all this plays in together with a concept called risk management. Now, I want to look at these in the concept of a car. So let's say you go out and buy a brand new car. What do you do? You want to avoid risk, and so how can you avoid risk with, with your new car? Well, obviously you still want to dr drive your car, so you're not just going to leave it sitting in your garage. So you have to accept a level of risk with that. If I drive my car, there is a chance an accident is going to happen. There's a chance I'll get a scratch in it when I'm parking in a parking lot. You can work at reducing the risk of, the, of those accidents and scratches. Uh, maybe in a parking lot, you park at the back end of the parking lot, and that way you're reducing the risk of getting a, a ding in your car from somebody uh, hitting their door against it or something like that. Another thing you can look at doing is transferring this risk. With transferring the risk, I have insurance on my car, so that way if something does happen, if I do get backed into or something, I simply call my insurance agent and they're going to handle it for me. So that's, that's uh, transference of the risk. All these play together with that concept of risk management. Risk management and security is also something we need to look at. What can we do in our network? We need to avoid risk in our network. What can we do to lock it down? We want to be sure we don't have rogue access points. We want to be sure uh, with our remote connections, if we are allowing them, who has those connections? There is some risk that has to be accepted within network security also. Uh, we have to accept that people need to connect to the network. They need to actually connect their USB drives, their external hard drives. Uh, they need to log into different remote sites in order to get their jobs done. Uh, so we need to find a way to reduce the risk. So maybe not everybody has access for remote login. Um, reducing the risk, we have good firewalls set up, we have virus protection. We try to reduce the threats on our network or the risks that we're, that we're taking. We can transfer some of these risks. There actually is logical insurance where you can actually buy insurance for your data that you have. So that might be an idea. Another way of transferring that risk is looking at uh, different security policies that you have in place and how you're going to handle these things along the lines as you're working on a day-to-day -day life. Risk is something we're all going to encounter and there's really nothing we can do to avoid it. Another thing with risk we have to take in is for our assets. I've mentioned logical assets. We have computers, we have cameras, we have all these different devices. We need to take inventory of what's going on and we need to find out how to minimize the risk that we do with those. Here again, we can avoid the risk uh, by trying to protect our information uh, or our equipment. We can accept the risk. We need to have the cameras out where we can use them. We need to have our computers set up where we can get to them. Uh, we can reduce it by maybe locking it where we're not using it. Uh, maybe have a security guard that roams the facility, uh, a fence around the facility for protection during the off business hours. And here again, we can transfer the risk. Uh, you can buy insurance for your facility, buy insurance on the equipment that you have within your facility. Now, here again, we can see a different chart on how to explain some of these and what we can do uh, to help out with this. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned risk, uh, risk identification. What are the risks? So flood, fire, uh, hurricane, things along those lines. Risk analysis, what can we do? What is the likelihood of it? Um, what are the chances that we're going to hit by a hurricane living in North Louisiana? Uh, what are the chances of a fire hitting our facility? Risk treatment, so actions that we can take uh, to do it. We can accept different risks. We can uh, put different actions in place to help prevent it. Monitoring and review. Now we got to monitor and view our risk analysis and what's going on because it's not constant. Things change. Uh, maybe we don't need as much security as we used to because uh, the equipment that we're trying to protect is getting older, so it's not worth as much to us. So does it really require as much protection as it used to? All this plays into all of our different assets and what we're doing with it. How can we uh, impact these? Now, a risk, um, sorry, an incident response plan plays into this. Now, with an incident response plan, it's basically a rule set on what do we do if one of these risks are encountered, one of these things uh, come up in our network. So an incident response plan is nothing more than a detailed description of what we're going to do 
if something happens on our network or in our facility. So the building does catch on fire. The incident response plan, we've taken these different risks into consideration. The incident response plan is going to tell us how to handle it and what we need to do uh, to get back up and running and get where we want to. Now, the next thing that we need to look at is our security policy. Now, a security policy is the policy on how we handle things. So, for instance, you might have a security policy on cell phones. Do you allow your facility to bring, or your personnel, to bring in their own cell phones or their own tablets and use on your network? You need to have a security policy that dictates what happens with that. Um, do some research on Boyd. Bring your own device. That is a trend that we're seeing. More and more businesses are embracing it, but you as a business or as a network admin have to decide how to embrace this also. What happens when they connect to your network and they start putting corporate data on their personal devices? Who technically owns that data? You own the data. The business owns the data, but the individual owns the device. So what if it's some trade secrets that they've had access to on their personal device and they leave your facility? Now, who has access to that device? What if they still have some of that critical data on that device? Do you as a business have a right to go to them and say, we need you to wipe that device, or hey, we need to take that device and we're going to replace it? Or what is your stance on that? That's where a security policy comes into play. With security policies, that is not something that's going to stay consistent forever. That is one of those things that's going to change over time. Now, we can see here we have a policy life cycle. Now, with a policy life cycle, what we're doing, we can, let's start on where it says develop, because we're really going to be looking at that initially. But notice after we get into this cycle, it's never ending. We're going to go from develop our, uh, our security policy to implement it. What do we need to do to let people know about it? So we're communicating it. We need to enforce it. Enforcing can be the big trick. What's the purpose of having a policy if you're not going to enforce it? You need to enforce the rules that you develop. So now we're going to go up to assess it. How effective is it? Is it working for us? Is it not working for us? For us? Then we go over to assets. Uh, how is it impacting the different assets? Threats, risks, develop. So we can see it's a never-ending cycle. We've got to go back and relook at. Uh, probably five years ago, Boyd or bring your own device was not an issue. That is something that we're having to look at nowadays. Now, in the future, you may develop a security policy d developed around Boyd, uh, but you're going to have to go back in and reevaluate it. I, I personally feel that over the next couple of years, you're going to see more and more businesses actually relying on their employees to bring their own devices. As a business, that's going to decrease your amount of overhead and number of assets that you as a business have to look at. You're going to be able, be able to rely on Boyd, on your employees bringing their own device into uh, the workplace. Now, within security policies, you don't have to worry about developing them all by yourself. With security policies, there's different organizations that have gone through and made out different templates or different frameworks that you can use. Um, there's the Enterprise Inf Information Security Policy. There's the Issue Specific Security Policy, so EISP or ISSP. They have some frameworks that are already developed. Bring those in, tweak them. They're not going to be ready for you off the shelf, but you can go in and you can play with them and you can get those set up for, the, for they work for your organization. Now, within frameworks, uh, you probably have heard of NIST. If you haven't, do some research. National Institute for Standards and Technology. They have some very major frameworks out there. Uh, a lot of uh, governments rely on those frameworks on how they're going to lay out what policies within their facility. Uh, another one is ISO 27000. It's the International Organization for Standardization. They have a really great model. Uh, the model they have is called the Plan, Do, Act Cycle. With the Plan, Do, Act Cycle, we can see here uh, we're going to start up in the top right hand corner with plan. Here again, notice there's no end to it, just like in our the security policy plan that I showed you a few minutes ago. In our planning phase, we try to understand what gaps there are. What do we need to do to close those gaps? Do. We implement the changes. We collect data on what's going on. We're always researching so we can do to improve it. We switch over to check. We're checking to see what impact it's having. Are we finding any issues with the, with the policy and the way we, way we interacted with them? We're acting, we're changing, we're updating, uh, we're studying those results from those other parts of the cycle, and what do we need to do? Now we're right back over to step one and continuing on the cycle. It's a never ending cycle plan, do, check, act. Uh, we're just going to keep on revolving around until, well, really until nothing. We're, we're going to keep on doing it. And now there might be some policies that we have in place right now that we actually phase out. So you need to look at that and see what do you need to do uh, to imp update your policy. 
in today's world, do we need to have a policy on, on where horses can be parked at our facility? Probably not. I want to drive my car. I'm going to ride my bike. I'm not going to uh, do that. Maybe pets might be an issue that you have to have in your policy. Uh, not really a security issue, but you still might need to look at a policy for it. So, so in wrap up with this one, you can see there's lots of things we've got to take in consideration within security policy, uh, within risk analysis, and what we're doing with our, within our facility. Don't try to create everything from scratch unless maybe there's a very specific issue that only impacts your facility. A lot of times you can find some information out on the net that you can use as a framework to help you build up and help make your life a little bit easier because developing these from scratch uh, would be quite time consuming. Biggest thing to take away from this video, remember that nothing is set in stone. It's always evolving. Uh, so really this plan, do, act cycle, this cycle is going to be moving forward as we go because different things are coming to play and different technologies are going to impact the way we handle things in the future. Hope you found this video helpful and see you next time.